What is up guys, it is Bucky, and welcome to your, let's see, 15th, I think, tutorial. I don't know, who's keeping track? And uh, in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the while loop. Now, in the last couple of tutorials, we learned about a sweet loop, and all it did was execute code over and over, and it was called the for loop. Well, in this tutorial, we're going to be learning about another loop, and again, all loops do is they take a piece of code and run it over and over and over again, so you don't manually have to do it over and over and over again so let's go ahead and get started um, let's go ahead and the first thing I'm going to do is demonstrate a simple while loop so let's go ahead and put int um, number and set it equal to 1 or 0 you decide I'll give you the freedom and now what we need to do is go ahead in the syntax which means the code to build a while loop is first you put while and then inside your parentheses right after you write the condition now what the condition is is it's basically a test and your computer is gonna say alright as long as this test is true I'm gonna keep running this code over and over again but as soon as this test inside my parentheses is false I'm gonna stop not running your code anymore so we need to make something that it's gonna change so let's go ahead and put while number is less than or equal to six so as long as our variable number is less than or equal to the number six it's going to keep running so sometime now that number is equal to one we're going to have to change its value so go ahead and inside your um, curly braces this is also part of the while loop so first you have your test and inside your curly braces you have your statements or instructions of what you want to run so the first thing we want to do is let's go ahead and just output our number ns log and put at and just go ahead and put like percent i and now go ahead and write number not numner there we go that's a bit better and now what this does is it says alright I'm gonna test if your number is less than or equal to six and then I'm gonna output your number so what it would do right now is it would say one 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 and it would run that forever but we want this loop to eventually break which means stop running so what we're gonna do is go ahead and change the number value so number plus plus that means every time you run this code add one to number so let's go ahead and run this and then I'll talk you guys through it. Save and run. And it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So what exactly happened here? Well, we had a variable called number and we set it equal to 1. And then we put it in a while loop. And this while loop tested and it ran this code so long as the number was less than or equal to 6. So the first time it said, all right. I got this number and it's one so I can run this code I'm gonna print it out add one to it alright let's do it again I got this number and it's two so I can go ahead and run my code so two change it to three so I get this number it's three and it went so on and so on and it printed out six down the line and eventually when it got to seven it said alright I'm only supposed to run this code when it's less than or equal to six so now that number is seven I can exit this program and I'm not gonna do this anymore so those are the basics of a while loop and how it kinda of works again like I said first it has a test and if the test is true it runs but if the test is false and it fails the test then this never gets ran and again if you never change the value of number then your test would always be true so you're gonna have this loop that goes on and on and on forever and it's gonna strain your computer so that's why you don't want to do that so let's go ahead and build kind of an interactive program and I need my dang hanky again so hold on one second on the bloody floor. Mm. Mm. Well, that's embarrassing and disgusting. So let's go ahead and get to the rest of our tutorial. And let's go ahead and I deleted everything so we have a number and it's set equal to one. 
Well, now let's go ahead and make another variable. Let's tighten this up a tidbit. That's what she said. Int Bucky. And this is going to hold a number. And this is just a little more, a better explanation of when to use the while loop. So let's go ahead and put scan f. So the user is going to type in a number. And it's going to be an integer. So go ahead and put percent i. And it's going to be stored in that variable Bucky. So what we did is our program is just going to have a blank cursor and we're going to enter a number and then that number is going to be stored in the variable Bucky. So now what we need to do, well we don't need to, but we just want to, is let's go ahead and test number less than or equal to 10. So as long as this number, vari the variable that we made, is less than or equal to 10, so pretty much whatever I'm about to do, I want to do it 10 times. You're going to run this bit of code. Well, let's go ahead and put ns log and then go ahead and put something like at and percent i times percent i make sure you spell times wrong equals percent i so what we're going to do is take that number that we have and it's going to go from 1 to 10 and we're going to take Bucky, the number that they entered, this is going to be constant, and we're going to times them together together, and give them the number times Bucky. And that's good. And now, of course, we need to take that number and add one to it every time so this loop eventually stops going. So let me go ahead and run this, and this is a neat little program, as long as I don't got any errors. So it says running. Now let's enter number um, 12 press enter and it says 12 times 12 is 12 yada 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 6 times 12 is 72 9 times 12 is 108 10 times 12 is 120 and that's it so how exactly did this program work let me explain to you guys one more time and this is would be an example of when you would use the while loop it's, it's a little more um, you know useful than just outputting like my little example so say for example you want to do your times tables 1 to 10 you would make a number and this is a variable and this would go from 1 to 10 eventually we set it at 1 to begin with next we have the user enter what number they want to times by and store it in a variable called Bucky or whatever you want Bucky is a pretty good one I think you should use that next we make a while loop that basically goes 10 times now we could have easily made this in a for loop it doesn't really matter Later down the road, you'll come across situations where a for loop's better and a while loop's better, but for now, I'm telling you guys, both of them. So since we have this number going 1 to 10 anyways for the while loop, we said, all right, we're going to take the number that they entered, which is Bucky, and take the number that goes from 1 to 10, which is going through the while loop, and we're going to times them both together, and for your answer, it's just number times Bucky. So that, again, like I said, is a little more useful. And uh, that's probably all the time I have for this tutorial. So thank you. I hope you learn a little bit about while loops and uh, build a simple program and you'll figure it out. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next tutorial.